Welcome back. Tennessee Republican Governor Bill Lee is taking action on guns following last month's deadly school shooting in Nashville. Governor Lee signed an executive order aimed at strengthening background checks for firearm purchases and is also calling on state lawmakers to pass a red flag law. Lee and his wife were friends with several of the Nashville shooting victims. We also learned that Kentucky Democratic Governor Andy Bashir and Florida Republican Senator Rick Scott both had close ties to someone killed in yesterday's shooting in Louisville. Whether you are an elected official or not, proximity to gun violence is now part of everyday life in this country. A new poll shows some astounding statistics. 21% of Americans say they've been personally threatened with a gun. 17% say they've witnessed someone get injured by a gun. And 19% say they've had a family member killed by a gun, either by homicide or suicide. And among black adults, that number doubles to 34%. Despite these numbers and the daily headlines about mass shootings, in fact, there was a mass shooting at a D.C. funeral home today that killed one and injured three others. Congress does not appear to be considering action. Joining me now on set is my NBC News colleague, Yamiche Alcindor, former New York Democratic Congressman Joe Crowley, and former Virginia Republican Congressman Barbara Comstock. Thanks so much to all of you for being here to discuss this. Yamiche, let me just start with you and those statistics, which are staggering. And here we are discussing yet another mass shooting. There was a shooting again today right here in D.C. And it doesn't seem like there's any real conversation about anything happening on Capitol Hill. It doesn't. And it's it's so, in some ways really remarkable. I remember as a reporter covering the Sandy Hook shooting and thinking the world was going to change because these were six-year-olds. These were children who were just going about their schools. And now what we have is Uvalde and other school shootings that are just sort of mim mimicking that. And you have nine-year-olds who are learning how to self-evacuate themselves from schools. Um, this is an issue that Congress just simply is deadlocked on and there doesn't seem to be the political will there to change something. I was struck by the fact that, that today at the Louisville um, press conference, there were these doctors who were talking about how this was not... They didn't have to shift a lot in order to deal with these gun yeah. violence, um, sh these gun victims, that they were able to sort of deal with the same things that they've been doing and that in some ways it's become routine for them to, to to deal with these gunshot victims. And it was heartbreaking to hear the medical officials talk mm. about that. And it was really in some ways a reminder how much this is both a medical problem but also a political problem and how they we've all just sort of become accustomed to it. It was so remarkable to hear the emotion in the voices of everyone in Louisville. Um, Barbara, talk a little bit about this. I mean, why is this an issue that is so divisive in Congress. Why can't anything get done on this? Well, because so many of the members are from these really red districts that don't support these bills, it is really hard. I mean, I, when I was in, we did, and we uh, we did support some of the uh, legislation that you saw passed uh, what, in 2018 in Florida. Remember, you had red flag laws and other bills that actually Governor Scott at that time signed. We wanted to do that in Congress. It didn't get passed. But I think it is encouraging that Governor Lee is now saying, let's look at something like red flag laws. Let's do something on background checks. Listen, I, you know, last year we did see uh, legislation passed that Republicans did support. It wasn't something that everyone wanted. Um, I would have supported that. You saw Republican support for it. I think we need to keep pushing to have more done in the states, on the federal level, whatever can get 50% plus one, let's have that discussion. Doing nothing isn't working. We know there needs to be more done. Joe, it's such a good point because Uvalde really seemed to be a tipping point. Mm -hmm. And the question becomes after each one of these mass shootings, is this yet another yeah. tipping point? Are we there again or what do you think? Probably not. Yeah. I say that, you know, uh, not wanting that to be the case, but probably not because time is on their side. If there's enough time that goes by, people forget, or it's not as pressing as other issues. I mean, right now they have to go up to Manhattan to hold a hearing uh, on crime in Jerry Nadler's district because that apparently is the most important thing that, that they have to do right now. I mean, going back to what you, you mentioned before in terms of the, the polling, and I, I'd rather say it like this, one in five Americans has had a family member who's been killed by gun violence. One in six Americans has witnessed a shooting. Th that is incredibly yeah. disturbing. Yeah. And and yet, it still does not resonate enough to you know. And it goes to the rules of the House and the Senate too. Quite frankly, you know. And who's in charge? Who's in control? 
uh, that all, and even when Democrats control everything, there's a resistance to really want to move too far because they're concerned about losing the majority. Young people, you saw the leadership in Tennessee. Young mm -hmm. people, and these young, these young men who obviously made such a strong statement, they just wanted to speak. They just wanted to have a discussion. Now we're having a national discussion, and I think young people, you know, independents, Democrats, but also Republicans, young Republicans have different views on this because their kids are in school, They've, they're having a different experience than our children had or, you know, older people had, and they're not standing for this anymore, and they at least want to have a discussion. They think some of these, this legislation is reasonable, and if Republicans don't at least have a discussion and say, yes, we will consider some of these things, they're going to pay for it, at least in some of these swing states and swing districts, and it's the right thing to do, to have a discussion on, because it's over the past 10 years, it's changed. Mental health, you just can't say do something about mental health. Mm -hmm. these, these guns were p bought legally, and as Governor Lee has said, we have to do more because this uh, young man in, in Kentucky, he bought it legally. There were no warning signs. Now, in Tennessee, a red flag law might have done something, but in Kentucky, what would have prevented it? We have to see what would have prevented it because doing nothing isn't enough. Yimish, it's so interesting because to Barbara's point, it, it's like there's a whole generation who's being brought up. And I think of Maxwell Frost, for example, someone who was elected basically on a platform of wanting to address this issue, the first Gen Z member of Congress. I also think about the fact that we have these stories now of people who have survived multiple gun shootings, that mm. maybe they, they had a, fa a family member or someone in their school, and then they grow up and they then have another shooting at their college. I mean, we rem I remember thinking about the reporter who was reporting on the shooting yeah. in, in the elementary school and then said, well, actually, I'm a survivor myself. I think that that's kind of scary. I also think in some ways it's, it's deepened into our American psyche. Who among us, ha among us has hasn't been in a crowded place and for a split second said, wait, how do I get out of here? What was that, mm -hmm. that loud noise? The fact that that's continuing to happen and the fact that there is a generation that's dealing with that, I just still wonder as a political reporter whether there's going to be a political incentive to really have the sort of urgency that you see on the ground there. Look at Tennessee. They are a different generation, but they also got expelled from the House and also one of them put back, but they got expelled for the House because they were being so loud and so I want to play vocal. something that uh, Congressman Tim Burchett said a couple weeks ago after the shooting in Nashville. Take a listen. You want to legislate evil, it's just not going to happen. We've got evil in this country and everybody just needs to tone down the rhetoric a little bit because all that does is gin it up in both sides and then they point the finger and nothing happens because not, if you think Washington's going to fix this problem, you're wrong. They're not going to fix this problem. They are the problem. It doesn't concern you that other countries don't have this level of gun other violence? Other countries don't have our freedom either. Barbara, that, that is not just the view of one member of Congress. I mean, he's reflecting what a number of members of Congress feel, and that's part of the gridlock, is it not? Well, sure, but if um, there are enough people, you know, I mean, when you have leadership, say, from somebody like Governor Lee, and that's why it's important when he stands up and says, no, we're going to do something different. Right now in Nashville, the RNC national meeting is being held in Nashville, and I think the fact that Governor Lee has said, no, we've got to do something different. That message may go home to those states saying, young people aren't going to stand for this. And they're just saying, let's have a conversation. Yeah. We've got to do something different because this, what we're doing isn't working. The spike has really gone up. And last year, when Republicans did vote on this, they were from a lot of conservative states. Mike Pence in Indiana, when he was governor, had red flag laws. Mm. Um, the people who voted on these bills last year, Republicans, they came back to Congress. So you can vote on these bills and you can come back to Congress, Republicans. I want to quickly turn to another topic that we've been deeply focused on in recent days, which is abortion. Yamish, there's been all of this back and forth uh, in the wake of that Texas ruling. Um, what is your sense of how the White House is approaching this battle? over the abortion pill, which now hangs in limbo. My sense is that one, they want to follow whatever the court orders. They're not going to sort of 
buck the, whatever the legal whatever the legal reality is here. But this is a White House that's going to be vocal and vigorous on saying that they support access to abortions. It's an issue that works for Democrats on the political sense, which it, when you look at the midterms and what happened there, conservative states like Kentucky, like Kansas, they took votes that showed that they were in support of abortion access. But also when it comes to the people that are in the White House, you have Vice President Kamala Harris, who's doing a number of events. You have, you have President Biden, who it sometimes sounds reluctant, but it's very clear that he is in support of abortion rights as an older Catholic man, he is he is standing up and saying, I am for abortion rights. So I think this is a White House that definitely senses that this is something that they can continue to talk about. We only have 30 seconds left, Joe. I also think they're going to get out of the way. You know, part of this mm. is a circular firing squad. <laughs> and as, as long as these issues continue to come back, it was a great issue for Democrats in the last election. And I, I think it's going to be another good issue for them in 2024. So part of this is to ensure that those rights are still there, to make sure that, that those pills are still available at the same time, yeah. make it clear who's, who's causing this rift. Barbara, just with 10 seconds left, Republicans haven't figured out their messaging on this issue. No, and particularly for those in the swing districts, you have people, somebody like uh, Congresswoman Nancy Mace, she realizes she's on an island and on her own, so she's going out and saying, whoa, this is, this is not a good idea. I thought we were going to be deciding this on a state-by-state -state basis. Now this is a national ban. What's going on? Yeah, really key point there. Thank you so much for a great discussion. Appreciate it, Yamish, Joe, and Barbara. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.